Okay. Uh, I have to be up obscenely early tomorrow morning, so I'm going to try to keep the review short this week. Uh, this was a very frustrating show for me for uh, several reasons. Uh, first reason, and I know I must sound like a broken record by now, but I think this is very important and it needs to be said. Where the hell is all the wrestling? Where is it? It, it feels like the matches on Impact are getting shorter every week now, and this was one of the two main problems that the two-hour deal was supposed to solve. The, the other problem was that the pacing was way too rushed. Well, that has been rectified at least, but what about these short-ass matches? Seriously. I mean, nothing in the undercard goes longer than three or four minutes except the women's match. The post-match angles keep overshadowing anything that happens during the matches themselves. The main event only gets about eight minutes again. And what is the point of going to a commercial break right before the match if you're still going to have one during the match? This is becoming a huge problem, TNA, and you cannot just keep on ignoring it because it's really starting to piss me off. The second reason... Uh... Did you know that the main event of Against All Odds is Christian Cage versus Kurt Angle for the World Heavyweight title? Because you wouldn't know it from watching this show. <clears throat> I think uh, Christian's had about uh, 30 seconds of TV time in the last two weeks. You know, the, the creative team is building up the other matches in the pay-per-view, but the main event, which should have the most build-up out of any of them, instead has practically none at all. You know, Angle and Christian, are, they're either focused on AJ Styles or they're focused on Tomko, but neither one of them seem to care that the world title is on the line here. You know, they're not building up this match anywhere near as well as they should, and it was the same damn problem with Final Resolution last month. And I, I, don't, I don't know where the Raiders are going with Tomko's character right now, but they're really putting him over huge here, and unless they plan on having him win the TNA Championship um, at some point in the near future, they might want to consider easing off on his push just a little bit, because right now he looks a lot more like a world title contender than Christian does. Uh, and the third reason... Where the hell is the character consistency? Last week, it looked like Jay Lethal had turned a corner. He was starting to break from the black machismo thing a little bit, becoming a more serious character, which, quite frankly, he really needed to, to do. He says he's lost his smile, he wants to kick Giant Divine in 3D's asses, and this week, he's dressed up like Devon, going, Oh, my brother, where's the bacon? So, what? We're just, we're just forgetting about what happened with his character last week? You know, he loses his championship and he doesn't care at all. He meant absolutely nothing. That is that is complete BS. And the creative team has got to stay on top of details like that. Worst X-Division champion ever. On the, on the other side of the coin, there were some good things that happened on this show, too. Uh, the Samoa Joe storyline continues to be interesting. But if he's going to be the special enforcer in Christian versus Angle at Against All Odds, they really need to get him interacting with those two already because they've made no effort at all to get us interested in what Joe's going to do in that match. No effort at all. Uh, Matt Morgan's getting more and more physically involved in Angles and storylines now. Uh, it looks like they're probably building up to Morgan's in-ring debut soon. So we've got that on the horizon. I'm looking forward to seeing what Morgan's got. I just hope it doesn't happen at Samoa Joe's expense because they're teasing a Joe-Morgan feud. And Joe really shouldn't be jobbing to anyone right now if he's going to keep his momentum going. Also, uh, we had uh, Kip James firing Roxy Laveau from VKM. And this was great because Roxy was the only watchable member of that group. So now we can get VKM the hell off TV already, which I hope is what happens. And we can get Roxy competing seriously in the women's division now that she's not tied down by those losers. Uh, also, we're beginning to see some friction in the Angle Alliance. Um... AJ Styles actually stood up to Kurt Angle for a minute there, finally, and that would damn well better continue next week because this was long overdue. Uh, I would absolutely love to see a feud between those two guys, and if that's where this storyline is headed, that's that's awesome. I mean, j just just imagine if this story culminated in the main event of Bound for Glory in a four corners match, Kurt Angle, Christian Cage, Samoa Joe, and AJ Styles. How amazing would that be? Um, also... Uh, so, well, so one other thing I'd like to mention, the 3D X Division segment that opened the show was very, very, very good. Aside from the Jay Lethal thing, it was completely against his character development from last week. I absolutely hated that part, but the rest of it was great. Bubba Ray, he cut an awesome promo, and uh, it, it actually really cut home, because he made a great point when he said that Saban, Shelley, and Lethal are not... Are, they're, they're facing these... Um, these veteran hardcore icons, and they haven't really been taken that seriously. And that's why they're on the losing end of this feud right now. And that, when you, when you think about that, 
And when we think about how their characters have been portrayed lately, that is absolutely correct. They haven't been taken this seriously, at least not, not as seriously as they should, given their circumstances. I mean, the X Division, I mean, their, their bread and butter is one loss away from getting thrown out like yesterday's trash, and these guys are dressing up in tie-dye shirts saying, oh, my brother, where's the bacon? You know? I mean, it, 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 it sets up a good journey for their characters because now they've got to realize that they need to they, they need to kind of you know, put the fun and games away and they need to man up and rise to the occasion if they want to beat these dirtbags. Hopefully that's that's how the whole thing will play out. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, Once again, a very frustrating show this week. Uh, there were some really good parts to it. There were some things that I liked a lot, but it wasn't quite enough to offset the bad stuff for me this time. Uh, mainly, the matches continue to be inexcusably short, and they have got to start building up these world title feuds better than this if they want anyone to pay to see the actual match. And that'll be it for me. That's all I got, you guys. I'm keeping it short and sweet this time. See you next week.